Hello. Today I'm going to take a foraging walk around my yard because I am looking for interesting plant material that I can bring inside and make into some decorations for the holidays or just for winter because it's dreary and uh, cold here in New Hampshire and in the Northern Hemisphere in general. So uh, let's take a walk and see what we can find. Okay, so you might be thinking, wow, Allison, that looks pretty ugly right now. But I can guarantee you that we can take some of these cool shapes such as this cool seed head right here. This is from a bee bomb. And we can make that into something quite beautiful. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a couple of these. And notice how they've got that kind of interesting architecture, the branching. I'm gonna cut these a little long. All right, so I've got a few. Long. I harvested a bunch of these for um, dried flower bouquets, and this bee balm is the variety that's very good for making teas. It's good for um, candida and other uses. So I've just got the seed heads here. I'll take a few of those. Next, this is interesting here. This is a goldenrod. And, well, the leaves are a little on the ugly side. I'll just strip those off. I find this little white fluff here, the seeds that are coming off of there are very interesting. So that's a cool shape there. And again, I highly advise that you take all that um, dead material off outside so it doesn't get all over your rug. The other day I cleaned my carpet for a day trying to get all of my plant material out of it. Okay, so I've got a couple of those and then over here I'm seeing a, uh, this is an aster that's gone to seed. So I'm just kind of testing it here to see is this all just going to come off when I get inside and it looks like some of the seed will, but these top pieces here, look at those, they look like little teeny miniature. Uh, you can still see the little aster flowers there. So I'm gonna cut a piece of that as well. So what do you think so far? My beautiful bouquet. Yeah, I know it looks ugly now, but I am going to be painting these and adding some nice color to them. So they will look beautiful in a bit. All right, let's keep moving on through the yard. Here's another, great option uh if you wild craft at all you love queen anne's lace because it does make a beautiful filler and all kinds of bouquets during the summer but now i've got this seed head here that's quite interesting and again i'm going to test this to make sure it doesn't just you know it looks pretty solid so i've got a couple seed heads here that i can use and i actually have a number of these that i already harvested over the summer so i can incorporate some of those other dry ones into my bouquet as well milkweed pods so milkweed pods notice how i'm saying keep saying pods this is the uh milkweed seed in there which knows how to fly isn't that beautiful nice little fluff if you find a milkweed you can Leave some of the seeds to replant and you can take the rest of them, some of them, if you ha want to do any like fairy house stuff, you can make some little seeds. Uh, those little seeds make nice little bedding. But what I'm really interested in here is these pods. I'll take all that seed out. I'll let it fly, fly away. And then I will have this cute little pod that I can use as a neat accent in Okay, I have this planted in my garden. This is called Teasel and it's this really cool looking um, sharp, it's a type of thistle. So that's the sissel feed head, 
thistle seed head. Thistle seed head. <laughs> and it's super sharp, so I'm actually gonna have to come back out with some gloves to harvest this, because I don't want to get speared by this. You can see all the spines up and down, but can you see that? I think I'll probably, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a purple, what do you think? Like a purple pod and seed head thing there? That'll look awesome. All right, let's keep going. I just got these like big grasses and they've turned a kind of a nice brown. I can imagine having those maybe like a yellow or maybe even like a creamier white color on those. So pine cone. Pine cone. And pine cones, as I'm sure you know, are useful for all kinds of different kinds of crafts. When these first fell, they were so sticky. I tried collecting them with my students and <laughs> they were so sticky we couldn't even pick them up. I'll be collecting a few of those, which I can wire up and put those into a uh, arrangement of some sort. But there are lots of other types of evergreen tree cones that you can look for, even in your local park or places like that. If they haven't been um, cleaned up by the groundskeepers, there's hemlock and spruce that both will drop nice cones that you can collect for use in your crafts and decorations. So you'll probably recognize this. This is the white pine, and this is like a little baby one that's growing here. I have tons of these coming up, and probably will have a bunch more next year. Do you remember how many pine cones fell down this year? It was crazy. Tons of pine cones. So you can collect pine cones, and you can also just bring in some of these fresh greens. Now, one important thing that you want to know when you're cutting uh, any kind of greens is that you want to make sure you don't want to come in and just take the top off of any kind of tree or usually any kind of main plant. You always want to take something off the side because that's like their main head that's growing up and you want to make sure that you're leaving that so it can grow again next year. So I'm just going to take one of these little side branches here. I'm not going to need a whole lot of this. And remember that when you're cutting, you don't want to leave a big piece of stem that has no branches or no leaves, or in this case, needles. Um, you want to cut all the way down to that, uh, right there to where the next set of branches is going to come out. And then I'll just take a branch maybe from over here. And again, I haven't left any extra big stubs sticking out. I've cut that down nice and clean right to the end of the branch. Okay, I'm doing some like serious foraging here because it'll be worth it because I found rose hips. Red berries. Everybody wants red berries in the winter. It brings in such a nice color. So I will be harvesting a few of those to take inside. And uh, again, I think I'm gonna go in because my hands are freezing. <sighs> so I only wanna take what I want. You know, I can, it's my yard, so I can always come back out, get more later if I feel like I want some more. But I don't wanna cut things that I'm not gonna use because that would be super wasteful. And we know the plant needs it worse than we do, right? So leave anything that you don't think that you'll use for the plant to have her uh, next year. Okay, I made it out of the rosary or rosary, rose shrubbery, whatever it is, alive uh, with some beautiful uh, green and red that will be perfect accent for my decoration. Okay, I'm making one last stop and over here I have uh, azalea and look at how beautiful the color of that azalea is for the winter i'm not totally sure what'll happen if it's gonna like dry up on me but i might cut a few branches of that and take that inside and see how that will look 
especially if I'm going to be doing a bouquet. So I'll get some of that. And then I have one more kind of weird weed seed head that I think I'm going to try to play with and see how that comes out. So this is evening primrose and it's a wild version of it. And it's got these really kind of cool shape to it. So I thought I might try to play with that. I'll definitely be painting this, probably spray painting it to get uh, a little bit of color and just to get some more definition with a curly kind of shape. And uh, I let this grow around my yard for two reasons. Number one, the Japanese beetles like it. And so they will tend to eat it instead of my plants. And the other reason is that um, the goldfinches love to come and eat the seeds and what they'll do is they'll they'll fly up and they'll land on the branch and they'll be wobbling back and forth and they'll just peck the seeds right out of the branch uh, during the I think it's like August or September when the seeds are ripe so I like to let these grow around here for them and ooh, there's a big one over there I'll probably take that and I'm realizing something else I could harvest is my rhododendron and it looks like oh it looks like i have a broken branch so all the more reason to harvest that can you see how it's broken up there it's broken off so that's not going to survive uh so i might as well cut it let's do it i think this will be enough rhododendron so that was a pretty big branch there and Let's look at the other, our, our whole stash here. So we've got our evening primrose. I've got a few pieces of the azalea that was growing in my yard. Just a regular landscape plant. I grabbed a bundle of these dried grasses. I've got my milkweed pods. I've got my bee balm seed pods, which I'll probably paint those some bright color. I've got my kind of dead flower heads here. So I've got my aster, and then this is the golden rod. I don't know if I'll use those. They might be a little too messy. More bee balm seed pods. And then I've got my Queen Anne's Lace Seed Pods. Those will look good painted. And then my Rose Hips. You might have other kinds of berries growing around. I've got a, just a little bit of the White Pine. And I think that will make an awesome bouquet. So I'm gonna head inside and uh, get to work on making my bouquet. And I'll put that in my next video, so be sure to click the link and go on to the next video to see how I put it all together. Until then, happy foraging and enjoy the winter by giving yourself a little bit extra color and a little extra decoration in your home to brighten it up. Bye-bye.